the two best friends agreed to shoot themselves on the roof of an unfinished building and leave the world at the age of 18. But one of the girls broke their promise out of fear. She left her best friend's body behind and fled in a hurry. Years later, Bum thought it was over, but then something strange happened to her family. Bum survived that time, but she suffered a terrible revenge. Bone and I.B. were good friends, and both of their families were very rich. The two families have been working together in business and had just recently built a joint venture building. On this day, Bone and I.B. came to the construction building and painted palm prints on the wall. They promised to live in the building together in the future. However, the financial crisis suddenly broke out, causing the two companies to lose their money. And overnight, they owed huge loans. All of their assets were mortgaged. I.B.'s father was depressed because of his debts and often took his anger out on his daughter. And Bohm's life was not good either. Her mother gets angry with her over the smallest things from time to time. Bohm's attempts to argue only resulted in a slap from her mother. After her father went bankrupt, he became mentally ill and often talked to the air and pretend to talk business with customers. Bohm saw this scene is very difficult. Gradually, both of them became depressed. On Bohm's birthday, she called I.B. in tears. She decided that life had no meaning and asked her to leave the world with her. At 1.0 p.m., they went to the top of their building and made a wish to end their lives together. Before they died, I.B. said, Don't let me die alone. Bone nodded her head. I.B. said happy birthday to her and then fell to the ground with the sound of gunshots. The sound of the gunshots startled Bone. She saw I.B. fall to the ground bleeding and was at a loss for words. And it was 12 a.m. Fearing death, Bohm chose to renege on her promise. She fled in a hurry as I.B. looked on with regret and disbelief. Twenty years later, Bohm had a family, a lovely daughter named Belle, and a famous local developer. She planned to restart unfinished projects, but then something weird happened. While Bohm was taking her team on a side visit to the building, her daughter Belle slipped away to play alone. She inadvertently came to the spot where Ivy had lost his breath and found handprints on the wall. Just then an eerie went blue. The door behind her was slowly opening. The girl went to play alone on the roof of an unfinished building. When the door behind her slowly opened, she heard the sound and turned her head but didn't find anything. Belle was curious to see the dark room behind the door and no one was there. She turned on the light of her cell phone to record around the room. At that moment, the camera suddenly auto-focused and faced recognition into the air. She put the phone down but still did not see a person in the room. The call startled her to the ground on her knees. On the way back, she picked up a broken pager. The pager had the blurry pictures on it. It looked old. Belle thought it was collectible and put it right in her bag. At night, she took out the pager and reloaded the batteries and found that it was still working. So she looked through its old text messages. But Belle's expression grew alarmed when she saw a death appointment. She thinks the pager is bad luck and it's bad luck to leave it with her. So she throws it away. Late at night, but was suddenly awakened by a sound. She got up and went out of the room to find the living room in a mess. And there was a noise from the cupboard. She faltered and went up to it. A knife was sticking out of the closet. Bone was so scared that she ran into her room and immediately called the police. However, the police arrived and searched her house carefully and did not find anything unusual. But just then Bone suddenly saw a pair of handprints on the wall. Her expression became instantly frightened. Then she remembered her dead best friend. They rushed back to the house to retrieve the security camera. The surveillance footage showed that Belle opened the door to the room when the action is unusually strange and she seems to be holding something in her hand. She painted her handprint on the wall and then smiled at the surveillance. Bohm saw this scene was directly scared out of a cold sweat. She also realized that this thing is not simple, so she installed surveillance in Belle's room. But when Bohm retrieved the surveillance late at night, she found something moving on her daughter's bed. She rushed to the bedroom, but when the covers were lifted, all she found was a stuffed animal. Her daughter was nowhere to be found. She went to the living room, and saw Belle opening the door as if she was greeting someone. Then Belle Saturday on the couch and talked strangely into the air. But there was nothing across from her. At that moment, Belle stood in front of her with a glass of juice and asked, what are you doing standing there? Bone looked back in horror and saw that the glass of juice on the table was empty. At that moment, there was a singing sound. When she went to the balcony to check, she found Belle sitting on the parapet, singing Ibe's favorite song. This time Bohm finally realized that Belle was not sleepwalking, but was possessed by Ivy's dead spirit. As the haunting of Bohm's house becomes more and more disturbing, she also finally realized that it was Ivy's spirit coming to claim her life. So Bohm brings an offering to the building where Ivy's life ended and prayed for Ivy to spare her daughter. But as soon as she said that, a gust of wind came 
It was clear that Ivy did not accept her tribute. Just as Bone was about to leave, she accidentally saw a little boy giving her a frightened look. Bone went to ask him and learn it that a woman in a red dress was following her. This made Bone feel very scared. She rushed home and saw Belle's neck hanging from a rope and swaying. But she was saved by Bone in time. After all this trouble, Bone was haggard. For years, she had abandoned her promise to live alone in this world. But she had been suffering from guilt. Now as a mother, how can she bear to let Belle atone for her sins? Now she has to come forward and put an end to what happened back then. Otherwise, her family would be implicated. So Bone wrote a suicide note. She drove to the basement alone. Then she grabbed a gun and held it to her chin to keep her promise to her best friend. But when she pulled the trigger, she didn't die, despite the fact that the gun was clearly loaded. It didn't kill her. Now Bone was furious. She drove into Ivy's house in a feat of rage, pointed the gun at Ivy's mother, and cursed at Ivy's posthumous photo. If you hurt my daughter, your mother will be buried with you. But Bone couldn't bear to do it. After all, she was the one who caused all these consequences. Then she told the secret of her promise with her best friend and admitted her mistake and begged Ivy to spare her daughter. But there was no response. After returning home, Belle did not want her mother to be hurt, so she secretly put sleeping pills in the cup. Belle is ready to sacrifice herself to save her mother. By the time Bone woke up, it was nighttime. She rushed into Belle's bedroom and saw many handprints all over the wall. Bone realizes that Belle's life is in danger. She rushed to the roof of the unfinished building and saw Belle ready to shoot. Bone desperately tries to rescue her daughter, but accidentally falls downstairs. In a trance, she saw Ivy's ghost standing beside Belle, like saying something. Although the real body of the ghost does not appear, but the atmosphere created by this karma is very good. Does this film scare you?